that time of the year again and George Osborne, the Chancellor, has unveiled his fourth autumn statement against the backdrop of austerity and efforts at trying to clear the nation's deficit. For those of you not familiar with the autumn statement, essentially what it is is an update of economic forecasts made to Parliament by the Treasury. The Treasury being a government department that's responsible for the British government's public finance and economic policies. The other update that people are probably more familiar with is the budget. Now, the message delivered by George Osborne is that the economy is recovering, but there's still a long way to go. So, how's this latest statement going to affect the likes of you and me, the average person on the street? Let's take a look at some of the key points and see how they're going to affect our future finances. One key change that will affect everyone is the amendment made to the pension age. So, how does this impact the workforce? Is the Chancellor going to make us work for longer? Well, no, not everyone. People in their 20s, 30s and 40s might have to work for longer before they get their state pension. The state pension age is already rising. By 2020, it will be 66. By 2028, it will be 67. And then it's expected to go up to 68 between 2044 and 2046. This means that people now in their 40s will not get the state pension until they're 68. Those in their 30s will have to wait another year until they're 69. And those in their 20s will have to wait until they're 70 years old. I think people have accepted an argument that if life expectancy has increased, then we have to move the age at which people retire up, at least in line with that. Uh, there is something slightly perverse about this, if you sort of think about it the other way around. We're looking at a situation at the minute where, particularly if you're under 25, if you're young, you're much more likely to be unemployed. There's about one in five young people unemployed at present. Uh, you're looking at a situation where you have record numbers of people underemployed that you know, there's uh, well over, in fact, 1.4 million people reporting that they would like to work more hours, but they can't actually get those hours to work. So there's lots of people out there looking for more work. And then you're saying to people who are going to be in work, well, you have to carry on working longer. This is a sort of perverse distribution of work taking place here. That's what the increase in the pension age implies. Not such good news for anyone born after 1990. However, the key point here being that we're all living for longer. So the government has devised a formula to increase the state pension age to keep pace with increasing life expectancy. Whilst we're on the subject of pensions, how the change is going to affect current pensioners? Pensioners will be marginally better off. Uh, they will benefit by £2.95 pence a week. So it's not a huge amount in absolute terms, but given the current economic climate and the pain that people are suffering from all the cuts that are taking place, something's better than nothing. The current state pension is £110.15 a week. This is due to increase in April 2014 by £2.95 a week, taking the pension up to £113.10. The Chancellor unveiled a plan to offer a boost to those who struggle to build up full entitlement of their state pensions during their working lives, even if they've retired. It will be offered as a top-up to the basic state pension. If you make a one-off payment, a cash payment, so it's a lump sum, you can then get a, a boost to your pension over the, the rest of your, your, you know, the time that you're receiving it. So it'll work out, as far as people can tell, the details are, are still yet to be confirmed. It'll work out that if you pay about £700, you'll get about £190. That's a one-off payment of £700. You get £190 a year uh, for the lifetime of your pension. Let's look at some of the key points the Chancellor's made with issues regarding the cost of living. George Osborne confirmed plans for free school meals for infants. An extra £150 million has been found to pay for school kitchens to deliver Nick Clegg's free school meals pledge. So what that means in real terms is that all under sevens will be entitled to free school meals, saving parents around £400 a year. From next September, it's estimated that more than 1.8 million children will benefit in England. The Chancellor also confirmed details of the plan for a tax break for married couples. The Married Couples Allowance is a new transferable allowance for married couples and civil partnerships. How it works is where one partner of the couple is at home and one partner is at work, or if one partner is working full time and the other partner is working part time, it enables the lower earner to transfer a thousand pounds of their tax allowance to the higher earner assuming that the higher earner is still within the basic rate tax allowance. This is also good for pensioners who can benefit where they are also on lower earnings. 
Energy bills are continually on the rise, so energy prices have attracted a lot of attention. Mr Osborne has promised to cut household energy bills by £50 a year without raising income tax. But how's he going to achieve this, and is it just a drop in the ocean? After all the fuss this year with the enormous increases in household energy bills, this is an attempt on his part to try and push back on that and to reduce the, the burden uh, that people face. The question remains is how effective will this be? Arguably not very because global energy prices on the wholesale market will be increasing and it's quite likely than you know, it's more likely than not likely that energy companies are not going to pass on their energy um, cost savings to the consumer. The worst part of it, of course, or at least the longer term impact, is that by cutting spending on climate change and renewables and investment into the future now, you're potentially storing up uh, huge costs uh, going forward. The Climate Change Committee, the Independent Climate Change Committee, uh, reckons that by 2030, 2040, households could be facing £200 billion uh, pounds a year extra in bills by failing failing to deal with uh, moving to renewables now. Transport is vital to our day-to-day -day lives, so how are drivers going to be affected? This is about 36 million uh, people who drive uh, in this country. So it affects an awful lot of people to see big increases in the price of fuel. Um, he's promised to freeze the duty, the extra tax that people pay on the petrol they buy until May 2015. So that's a fairly, again, it's a fairly direct impact on certainly anyone who drives. So increasing numbers now uh, do drive. Very, very large numbers of people have to commute to work. It's a necessary part of their expenditure. It's become fairly standard for the Chancellor to cancel planned fuel duty increases and in a widely expected move, fuel duty has been frozen until May 2015. Any stop to increases in price rises is always welcome. So 36 million UK drivers, not least the record number of workers who now commute by car, some 17 million in total, will be sighing with relief. The car tax disc, which was introduced in 1921, will no longer be needed as the government makes a move to progress into the digital age. Well, the changes to the car tax disc is a pretty simple one. It's, it's a case of the government wanting to modernise the way they do things. So their idea is to get rid of the old uh, tax discs that we see on the screens every day and that everyone's familiar with and understands how they work. The government wants to modernise it by putting it on a central database and making it all online. Huge issues with that because every time the government do, you know, try to put um, consumers' data online, someone loses a disc with 20,000 names and numbers on it. So there are huge security concerns about it, but there are also huge operational concerns because secondhand cars, for example, uh, may be impacted because people might not be able to work out about the excise duty that's owed on it, for example. Currently, motorists can choose for tax discs in six or 12 month instalments. The new system will allow people to pay the charge by monthly direct debit. However, this is expected to cost 5% more than making a one-off payment for the whole year. The changes are anticipated to come into effect in October 2014. But I hear you ask, what if I don't drive? How's the autumn statement going to affect me? Well, the Chancellor's made some changes that will affect people who use public transport. The idea that the Chancellor has is that he's going to make sure rail fares, for example, are maintained, that they only rise with the real cost of living and not as was previously the case, which was a, a rise of inflation plus 1%. So his idea is that there'll be no huge price increases on, on, on the trains, for example. But actually, what our past history has shown us is the train companies always find a way of massively hiking the fares. So although George Osborne claims that this is a way of stabilising the ever-increasing burden on commuters, we will see, where, you know, the proof will be in the pudding. There's been much reaction to the Chancellor's autumn statement and, as expected, criticism from the opposition about the standard of living in the UK. The Labour Party campaign truck drove around Westminster with a billboard reading The Tories' cost of living bombshell. You're £1,600 worse off under David. Further criticism came about the cost of living from union leader Karen Jennings. Let's think about where the wealth of this country is going. It's going to the top 1% of people. They're all experiencing growth while everybody else is experiencing a downturn. If we shared the cake out fairly, we could afford these things. Fuel's going up, food is going up, energy costs 
uh, regardless of what's said, are becoming unaffordable. This is cold comfort for Britain. What we need to see is a government that is prepared to invest in our infrastructure and start to pay people a decent income and they then in turn will be able to shop in local communities and help the economy that way.